Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I haven't been in the garage for a little while, so uh, welcome back to the man cave. The reason why I'm in here and not out on the bike is because it's an absolutely horrible, filthy, dirty day outside. It's the middle of December, typical blighty day. It's raining, it's foggy, it's cold, it's wet, it's greasy. Um, it's just not a day you want to be out and about on the bike. So thought I'd get in the garage and do uh, a little mod on the Panigale that people have been talking to me about for ages. Uh, I was a, bit, a little bit sceptical about it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but it's known as the Panigale Throttle Spacer Mod. And uh, the reason why it uh, is so popular is because there is a problem with Panigales. They have a ride-by-wire throttle, as so many modern bikes do. Um, but in the case of the Panigale, there's a little bit of play in it. Let me show you what I mean. So when you just wind the throttle here, there's just that little bit of movement there. Now you do get that, of course, on a, on any sort of throttle that you have a throttle cable with, um, and you kind of you just get used to it and you work around it. And I have to admit, I've never really seen it as a as a big problem on the Panigale. But a lot of people do. They say it makes the makes the bike seem very on and off, very snatchy. And after I had that little drop a while ago, uh, I'm thinking actually, the more control I can get on the bike, the better. So uh, what I've done is invested in one of these spacer kits that takes that little bit of slack out and apparently transforms the way that the bike handles. So stick around, stay tuned, uh, and I'll show you all about the Panigale spacer kit and how to install it. Okay then, so before we get into the uh, actual install proper, let's show you the kit itself. It's something that you get from eBay, from some enterprising soul has put it together. Uh, and this is what you get in the kit. It's very, very simple. I don't know if you can see that. It's just this little um, little bit, a little tri-point bit. It's like a Phillips, but with three three bits, a special tool that you need for the uh, for the housing on the throttle. And then these two little tiny um, red bits of plastic. It's going to take that bit of slack out. I don't know if you can see them on there. Uh, and that's all it is. And that cost me, I bought it from the US, and I think it was $38, so what's that about? 25 quid, something like that. But, uh, you know, considering it's just those two little bits of plastic, somebody's making some good money. But I'm not, I don't mind about that because if it does, uh, if it's as good as everybody says, then uh, everybody wins. He gets his money or she, and uh, and I get a, a throttle that no longer wobbles about. So that, that's good. And the other thing that comes with it is um, some installation instructions. I'm no. Um, technical mechanical expert as you will have gathered if you've seen other of my videos um, so I'm going to sort of work through this as we go uh, and see how we get on it could be a calamity and I might need to call in uh, my man Nigel to get me out of a mess at the end of it but we'll see everybody says it's easy to do so let's let's see the only tools you need are a flathead screwdriver uh, another Phillips and then obviously some sort of driver to take that bit uh, the special um, Ducati bit okay so let's go and see how we get on with this okay then according to the instructions first thing to do is gather the tools we've done that locate the throttle assembly well I'm not an expert, I think it's probably this part, uh, and locate the screws to, uh, to unfasten, which are these bits here. So I need to use that special try bit to undo these ones first. So uh, let's crack on and do that. Well, before I've even uh, started on this particular job, putting the try bit in there, I can see that it doesn't actually fit particularly well. And the top screw looks already like it's a little bit mashed up, like somebody's been at it already. But as it's uh, my bike and I've never been anywhere near that before, I don't quite understand why that is. So. Uh, before I even start, I've got a problem there, because that's going to be a right bugger to get off without mangling that even worse. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to be very careful with this. OK, so having learnt the hard way in the past about not mangling screw heads, uh, rather than proceed with the bit that was uh, provided with the kit, uh, luckily for me, I have bought uh, a while back a whole set of all sorts of bizarre bits. So it's this here. It's made by a company called Arcan, and it's got every conceivable bit in there. And luckily for me, it's got some of these try head bits. So um, I found one in there which is that one, which looks a lot more meaty than the one that came with the kit. Uh, and actually, it fits in there much better as well. I'll, I'll move the camera and I'll show you uh, the, the, original, the one that comes with the kit versus the one that I've found, and you'll, you'll see immediately the difference. Okay, so this is the uh, bit that came with the kit. And when you put it in there, you, you can see that it's, there's quite a bit of play in there. It's just, it's too pointed at the top end. It's not, uh, it's not blunt enough. You can see how that moves. If I attempt to use it on there, it is just going to mangle the screw head. Whereas this one, out of my kit, you can see it's got a much blunter top end. And hopefully you can see, very obviously, once it's in there, look, it's located completely solidly. So that's the one to use. So that's uh, valuable lesson number one. Make sure you've got the right tool. Turns out that the, the bit that's provided, at least in my case, uh, isn't, isn't a good fit for the actual screw. OK, having got around that particular problem, let's uh, see if we can actually undo them then. And actually, that's no problem at all. Okay, and then it's the Phillips ones out. Okay, then it's the two matching Phillips ones, using the number two Phillips head. 
Hope that fits. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. And the one on the bottom. Gotcha. Okay, and then apparently you lift the front part off. What about the back part? And then the front part just kind of comes away. Okay, so let's just give you a slightly different view there of what we're dealing with. So that's the way it works. I can see there are a couple of um, little lugs here and here that are shaped similarly to the red plastic pieces. So uh, that should be straightforward-ish to fit them on. Let's give it a try. Okay, so uh, I apologise here if the view goes a bit awry. It's quite difficult to, this looks to be quite filly. So this is where the flathead screwdriver comes in. Uh, and there's the little um, red piece that I'm going to fit. And that is going to have to go over that little lug there. I don't know if you can see that. That's going to be quite an art to get that on. Uh, and I've got the most least dexterous fingers ever. But let's see. Come on. Feels like we're getting there. Nearly home. In fact, maybe two screwdrivers would be the answer. There we go. It's there. Great. Okay, so that was that one. What a faff that was. And I've got to do the same with the one on the other side, the smaller one, just down that end. So close. Yeah, so far. Yes, we're there. Got there in the end. Right, nice and flush. Brilliant. That's those back on there. Perfect. Okay, now I've just got to put that throttle housing back on. Okay, so with this, there's this little... Um, well, they call it a nub here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and that has to align with a little hole in the tube there, so. Or in the handlebar, I should say. So let's give that a try. It's gonna go on there. Okay, so that's now located. so it won't move around the handlebar once we bolt her up. So let's get some screws in to hold her in place. Reverse procedure before. Just slacken the other one off slightly so I can do that one up. That's probably the answer. definitely the answer because they act in as a pair you can't do one up tight and then expect to do the other up you sort of got to both do them up at the same time They're very tight in the first place. Perfect. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so that's the finished job. Hopefully, you can see now, look, there's absolutely, I'm having to press and they're quite hard to move at all, but there's no slack to start with at all, so that's going to be nice and smooth hopefully in operation. Top job. 
Okay, so there we have it. Um, like all these little jobs that everybody says are dead simple, it actually was a bit fiddly. But it didn't take me long. It was probably 20 minutes start to finish actually doing it. The worst bit was actually getting those little plastic spaces in, as you saw. And the end result is there's absolutely no slack at all. So uh, really pleased with that. So looking forward to giving it a ride. Not going to do it today. As I said, it's just greasy and horrible and wet and raining and just not nice out there. So uh, not a day you want to be taking your spangly sports bike out. But uh, I'll do a future video and give you an update as to how it feels actually in use. But uh, hope that's been of some interest to you if you're a Panigale man uh, and you haven't fitted the spaces uh, now you can see how it's done and what you're in for okay look forward to speaking to you next time until then this has been the missing and flyer cheerio